Hello guys, so in this video we will be going to discuss how we can deploy Flask application on AWS EC2. So the obvious thing is like we would require an EC2 machine. So uh, here I am on the AWS console. So let's quickly launch an instance. Okay, and uh, I will name it as Flask app. Uh, my bad, I miss A. Uh, yeah, then after we select the OSS Ubuntu, so you can select as per your convenience or like requirement then after instance type i will keep the free trial eligible then after i will select and keep here and then after i will keep all the configurations default and then after just launch it okay so once the instance has been launched okay so i have already i already have a pre-written code for the uh, flask application so here what i am trying to do is like importing the flask then after created an app then after creating two routes the one is with slash name and the one is at slash version and uh, the return you can check that out and then after just starting the application okay so i will go back and then after yeah it is in running stands running state now i will click connect it okay so it has been now meanwhile it is connecting so obviously for uh, the first word, first thing we, we would be required is to import the flask like we need to install the flask library for that we need uh, I think a virtual environment and the PIP pip as well so what I will do I will install the Python 3 pip first I think before that let's quickly update it as well so do I have to get updated okay once this has been updated like this command has run successfully we will run this installation command for python 3 pip yeah i think it would not take more than 10 seconds yeah that's done then after i will paste it for installation of python 3 pip i will type yes okay so meanwhile python 3 pip is installed what we will do after that we will install the uh, virtual environment so that is basically it, it helps you to create a virtual environment so let us suppose you have multiple application running on on the same ec2 and you want it to have uh, let us suppose different flask version so how would you maintain that so it is always advisable to have an virtual environment in that you need to install the uh, different libraries that you do okay so that is the requirement that is the purpose of this virtual environment okay so i will install this virtual environment my bad I don't copy it it's just clean text yeah virtual environment is yeah meanwhile it is okay and after that this command is used to basically create a new environment okay So this if we just type the ls here a new environment has been created okay so to activate this virtual environment you need to type this command source ve and we pin activate so kind of it will activate the environment so you can check this out like we here we got ve and we in the bracket okay after that i will run the pip install flask command to install the flask uh, library and once this is done we will write this code in the like here and then after it. okay so i will create a new uh, file name it nano app.py and then after i will paste it okay and then just just save it okay the only thing is point to be noted here is like we are hosting our application on port 8000 and make sure you have this host as well here sometimes if this host is missing it is kind of allowing traffic from only the inside the machine like from inside the local host only okay so if you if you tap this if it, it is kind of binding the application onto the public IP of the EC2, okay. So then after I think uh, what I will do, I will just run it. Okay. So now if you see the development server has been started and uh, kind of like uh, the application is running. Okay. But to access this, uh, let's copy this public IP and paste it here and then after just write the port number on which our application is running okay but uh, the issue is this would not be accessible the reason being is we haven't uh, allowed this uh, this ec2 instance access on the port 8000 so what i will do i will go inside the ec2 like the console 
then after inside the security section i will open the security group and then after inside the inbound rule i will edit it and then after i will add the rule that allows basically traffic from any ip on the port 8000 okay so make sure if you are not able to access the application uh, the first one is uh, here we have a host De definitely we should have an host entry and then after we we are allowing the custom like we are allowing the traffic from any ip on the port 8000 okay then i will save it okay once this has been saved i will open the enter okay so now we got the page that not found the reason being is we don't have any kind of the root url here so what i will do i will copy the slash name and now you see we got the aws master cell that is what we are returning and then after if i use the version as well so we would got this as well okay yeah so now if you see like we are able to access the apis from the uh, like the uh, uh, from the chrome or anything like that but the point is here if you see it is saying the this is a development server do not use it in the production development so uh, it is not ideal to start the application in this way like python 3 app.py and just simply use this command the reason being is flask come with an default development server so it it would be better if you use it something like gunicorn okay so if you don't know gunicorn gunicorn is basically a wsgi based server that allows you to host your uh, 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 like the application okay so any web application it would be either fast ways fast api based anything like that okay so let's quickly uh, install the gunicorn as well okay and then after i will run my app gunicorn app gunicorn app so now if you see like the application has been started on port 8000 so let's try to run this url again uh, i will open it in a new tab okay my bad the reason it is not accessible is we haven't passed uh, the hyphen this host we are talking about like previously right so that's the reason we are not able to access it so what we can do we will just copy this then after just g unicorn hyphen b is basically for binding the 000 on the board 8000 and app okay so after this this would be accessible yeah so now this is accessible okay so let us suppose uh, but the issue is if you see here it is kind of a like we got the interactive con like console but we don't want to get it let's say we wanted to run this application in the background okay so what we will do we will just use this no hub module which basically uh, allows you to run anything in the background and then after gunicorn we know this is the server on which we are hosting the flask application after that we have this worker thread so worker is basically it is kind of a we have a single instance running if we use this command but with the help of this hyphen w5 we are kind of running the same five uh, version of this application okay so if you if the application got the traffic it would be served by the different five threads right and then after we have this end in the end which basically like uh, uh, run, run it in the background okay so i will stop it and then after we paste it and now you see it says the process number 3566 and the any like the any logs of this application would be printed out in the nohub.org file okay so i will ls it and just no uh, open it so see this has been started okay i will just hit it again and if i open it you will see the logs of the uh might be we are not getting the logs i think uh, but we can like if you want we can enable this logs as well okay so any error in case happen we would definitely got inside this nohub.org file okay so that's that's the way we can run gunicorn so again if you are like trying to understand why we are not using the flask development server it is not very effective from the security perspective and the performance as well so if you wanted to understand the why we use gunicorn i will post in part 2 as well of this of this okay so that's it for this video so in this way we have hosted the flask application on the ec2 uh, another two videos of this part will be the gunicorn performance why we use gunicorn in comparison to the flask development server and the second would be how we can attach an api gateway on this ec2 okay so if you have any queries or comment please post, post it out in the comment section